Yeah, for the 14th time, Trinidad and Tobago Red Force are champions of 50 over cricket in the Caribbean. The achievement came after victory against the Leeward Islands Hurricanes in the final on Saturday at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy. The Red Force comfortably chased the Duckworth Lewis revised target of 138, scoring 141 for three in just 23.4 overs after dismissing the Hurricanes for 135. The match reduced to 43 overs per side. In his final time in List A cricket, Sunil Narayan, the mistress spinner, took 3 4 17. Indeed, he was a mystery to earn the Man of the Match award. Let's now hear from the losing captain, Alzara Joseph. I couldn't ask for anything better except for winning the trophy, but um, the boys really put in the hard work. I can't ask for anything better from the boys. And they've all chipped in, really, but the new signings in particular, Graves, O'Shane Thomas, have made a real difference this year. Yeah, I mean, we all know the quality that they bring to the team, and we saw it this season. So um, I just think, all in all, we, we had a good season, but um, it's just unfortunate we didn't win. All right, now joining us via Zoom is Trinidad and Tobago Red Force captain, Darren Bravo. Darren Bravo, it's a pleasure to have you on the Sports Mag Zone. First of all, congratulations. And how are you doing uh, a couple of days after your triumphant performance? Uh, thank you very much for having me. And as you rightly said, a couple of days, I got a couple of days to relax after the final. So I'm just chilling at the moment. Yeah, sounds good. First of all, Darren, describe the experience of captaining this star-studded Trinidad and Tobago Red Force setup. Um, I think it was an easy one for me. Um, each and every single member of our Red Force team. But before the start of the tournament, we identify each player role and responsibility. So it's just a matter of each player going out there and playing their role, executing their role. And I think we were, I think I was able to achieve that, which was the most satisfying thing apart from winning. Yeah. How enjoyable was it the the the, the captaincy role for you? Well, to be quite honest, um, for me, just trying to lead from the front as much as possible. Um, as you rightly said, we had a couple of international players on our setup. Um, they, in their own right, are leaders. So it was a easy, it was a sort of help for me as well, um, having the likes of Sunil Narayan, um, Nicholas Poor, and Jason Mohamed, those guys who have been there, done that in, in the past. So it was easy for me, and I'm really happy that I was able to lead on those guys' shoulders for some advice each and every, each and every time when I think I was under some sort of pressure or anything like that. Yeah. Let's talk about the final on Saturday because in the preliminary round, the Leeward Islands Hurricanes pushed you all the way. It was a pretty close match and on Saturday you absolutely smashed them. What was the difference, you think, in the final compared to when you met earlier in the tournament? I just think it was a matter of basically executing our plan. Um, I think in the first game, you know, they sort of hit us the first punch and um, the way Kyron Powell and Justin Graves opened the bat and Powell was very aggressive. We didn't really expect something like that from him. And um, it sort of put us on the back foot, but we know the quality of our spinners. We know the wickets are conducive to spin. And, we, but, and the likes of Sunil Narayan and Yannick Kaira and Aki Hosein in the middle of the innings are definitely going to propel them back. So we knew that going into the final, if we control the power play, it was going to be difficult for them to basically you know, get the whole of us. So and we were able to do that. And at the end of the day, the result speaks for itself. Right, and the results speak for themselves, and your performance also spoke for itself. How good was it to finish this tournament, one as captain, but as the leading run scorer for the TNT Red Force and the entire competition? Yeah, it's a great feeling indeed. I've been putting in a lot of work, but uh, my main goal and, and my main goal in this entire tournament, or whenever I was given the captaincy of the Red Force team, was to lead from the front. Um, take that level of responsibility each and every single time I get the opportunity. And I think I was able to do that with flying colors. But um, at the end of the day, it was most important trying to help the other youngsters on the team, you know, understand their game and stuff like that. So all in all, I think it was a pleasing effort from myself. Yeah, Trini fans are very, very passionate about uh, cricket and, of course, the Trinidad and Tobago players. So what really made me happy is when I saw that they could attend the matches um, free of charge. How was the turnout and how was the energy from the crowd, especially knowing that y'all were winning and it was the last match that they would get to see Sunil Narayan in the Red Force colours? 
Yeah, I think um, at, at the final was icing on the cake, and the, the fans really came out. Unfortunately, the rain sort of, you know, set us back a little bit. But having said that, I think it was a, a good initiative by the West Indies cricket, the cricket West Indies, um, to allow the fans to come in at the stadium for free. Um, as we all know, Trini likes freeness. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody so all likes all, think, freeness, come on. <laughs> so all in all, I think it was a, a very, very good initiative. And especially Sunil and Ryan playing his last game for Trent Tobago. And um, it was a bit, of, a bit of sweet moment because he knew he's, a, he's young. He have a lot of us still to West Indies cricket, but he had made up his mind. He would have contributed tremendously to both Trent Tobago and West Indies cricket. So all in all, as a team, we wish him all the best. And as a team as well, we made a conscious effort actually win this one for him so basically he can go out on a high so we're happy that we're able to do that and we really and truly wish him all the best in his future endeavors yeah lance has expressed that he has a lot of time for terence hines tero as we call him i had the opportunity to be around him when he played for musai sports club so that's quite some time but talk to me about you know terence hines and how he has elevated his game from those Musai days to now representing the TNT Red Force and becoming a household name. Yeah, very, very cool customer. Um, someone that basically do what it's necessary to be able to perform with Trent Tobago. Um, as we all know, he's known as a win ball cricketer. So yes. that natural ability, that natural skill to basically play the game of cricket is there. And um, he's hungry. He wants success. And each and every single time as a captain, I call upon him to come and do the goods or come and basically get us a wicket or go in lay down in the back end of the innings and give us something special. He is quite capable of doing that. So as a captain, I'm really happy that he was part of this setup. He sort of gave me that assurance that in the back end we don't have much to worry about. So all in all, he had a very, very good tournament and hopefully he can see the light at the end of the tunnel sometime in the future where big and better things are concerned. Yeah, Darren, it was a, a significant day strong team effort by Trinidad and Tobago throughout the tournament. Yourself as a top batsman and Sunil Narayan with the most wickets, but there was also Kieran, At uh, Kieran Otley and um, uh, Karia who were, well, Karia and Narayan were two of the top three bowlers in the statistics, and yourself and uh, Otley were two of the top three batsmen in the statistics. So as far as the contribution is concerned, you got good, good efforts from a lot of your other teammates. Yeah, that was the most important thing we try to identify as a team. Um, the good thing about our setup is a situation where we do have to rely on each and every single player, as I mentioned previously, have a, had an important role to play. And I believe each and every member of the team will keep, will, did that. Um, everybody put up, someone put, put up their hand at some point in time. It was not a matter of if Darren Bravo don't score runs, Red Force going to lose. Or if Sunil and Ryan didn't take wickets, Red Force is going to lose. So I believe and honestly believe it was a total team effort. The guys gave it their all. I think the relationship we have with the coaching, the management staff and stuff like that played an integral part as well. The coach allowed us to go out and express ourselves. The manager always there to make sure you know, each player is comfortable and stuff like that. We basically introduced Omar Khan, who was also part of the Red Force setup back in the back in the days with Karen Paul and Adrian Brown. And so he came back to learn his, learn his experience as well. So that in itself played an important part. And all in all, it was a collective team effort. And um, at the end of the day, we went out and did it for our country. And that was the most pleasing thing. Yeah. Can we shift the discussion now to Darren Bravo, uh, Darren? Because when the selectors had named the ODI team to face the Indians back in the summer, there were some West Indies cricket fans who felt that your name should have been there. Uh, there are some uh, ODI cricket coming up soon. Um, do you have any aspirations to return to international cricket? Yeah, always. Um, that's the reason why we play the game. We always want to represent the West Indies and I haven't received any call or anything like that. So I'm just taking one day at a time, continue doing what it is I have to do. And I guess whenever that call comes or if it comes, I will see how it goes. Yeah, West Indies cricket has struggled now for a very, very long time, Darren. And you are seen by most experts as one of the most gifted batsmen um, to come out of uh, this region in, in a long time. But your appearances in international cricket have been limited for, for whatever, whatever reason. Um, you, you are still young enough to contribute significantly. Um, how, how confident are you that you will get a call for the England series coming up? I'm not. Um, I'm not really focusing on that. To be quite honest, um, as a player, I just need to continue working on my game. As I said, if the calls come, 
then we see how things go. Um, surprisingly, said I'm a bit young. I'm someone that always, you know, looking at social media and reading comments and stuff like that. And sometimes you see a lot of hurtful stuff when you generally know that you care about West Indies cricket and, and all those type of things. So when you see fans basically lashing out on you and saying a lot of bad stuff about you, it, it definitely hurt and it, it gave you that sense that sense of it really and truly makes sense actually going out there and trying to represent the people of the Caribbean. But at the end of the day, I have to do what I have to do. And I always say haters have to hate and winners have to win. Everyone have a job to do. So for me, it's just a matter of focusing on what it is I have to do. And let's see how things go from there. Yeah, you know, Darren, if I, if, if I had spoken to you, let's say, about 13 or 14 years ago, I would advise you to stay off social media and stay away from <laughs> viewing a lot of those comments because I can tell you it can be quite depressing. And it's quite easy for individuals who are not in the spotlight to um, hide behind their computers and their phones and type whatever they feel um, to type. And it's quite okay, but it, uh, clearly it's too late for me to give you that advice now. I, I do want to know, though, if you did not get selected for the England ODI series coming up in December, would you be disappointed? And exactly how disappointed would you be? Uh, just keep a smile on my face, to be honest, man. Um, <laughs> it, I believe that time when I supposed to get picked, I didn't get picked. At that time when I probably got selected, I probably was not my best. So it's, at the end of the day, sometimes you up, sometimes you don't. So I really want to... You know, say if I don't get picked, I'm gonna be disappointed. Yes, obviously, when you do well, you want to be rewarded. But at the end of the day, I think um, for me, just continue doing what I have to do. If in a situation, I have to probably make more runs next year or something like that. I'll try my best to do that. So for me, just trying to stay humble, trying to stay calm, trying to enjoy helping the other youngsters in Toronto Bay set up, and just trying to be a role model as much as possible. Yeah. So let's look at it this way then, without thinking about West Indies selection. Um, it may or may not happen. What, I mean, what does the next three or four months look like for Darren Bravo? Well, um, yeah, I believe there's a regional four-day starting back in January. Uh, January or February, I'm not sure the exact date. But as of now, that is where my mind is. I want to start preparing for that tournament as soon as possible and see how I can improve on certain aspects of my game and stuff like that. So. At the end of the day, it don't stop as a professional cricketer. You always have, there's always room for improvement and stuff like that. So, yeah, but there's going to continue taking it one day at a time. And I guess the selectors have a job to do, and I also have a job to do. So, we'll see how things go. Yeah, Ricardo asked you about the next few months. And then I saw your hat, and I remember that you also have a brand, just like your brother, that you know you push and you do business as well. So, you're not only reliant on the cricket for income and to live, you have your own business going on. So can you tell us a bit about that? Because we know your brother is producing music studio, but uh, your business. Yeah, um, obviously 46 is my is my shirt number. Um, wearing for the West Indies and everywhere I go. So um, for me, it's just trying to basically promote that brand as much as possible. Um, and just trying to basically, you know, sell myself in the best possible way. I always try to, you know, be the best role model that I can be for the youngsters at the Queen's Park or trying to be go set up and stuff like that. So they all look up to me and yeah, as you rightly said, at the end of the day, we have to sort of, you know, try different ways and means to bring in an income to support their family and stuff. I'm getting a lot of support from the 46 brand, so hopefully, you know, it can continue. Um, now, now we're entering into the, the shades sort of um, avenue. Yeah. I'm going to be doing, you know, t-shirts, sneakers and things very soon. So hopefully it can propel into something big and special in the future. All right, tell you what, send some to the Sportsman Zone and we'll rip them <laughs> one of these Fridays for you. Um, I, do, I do have to ask you this though, Darren. Do you have any DJing or singing talent? No, actually, when Dwayne writes a song and he goes in the studio and singing songs, he sent it to me for me to give him the OK. Okay, <laughs> so you're the but boss. Before it can reach on the, um, on the media and the airways, I have to, okay. give, I have to sign off on it first. Okay. But, but, but you don't sing it though? No, I don't sing it. I don't sing it. So whenever you hear some of the media, know that Darren Bravo basically sign off. <laughs> <laughs> so we know where to come if we're not enjoying it. If you're not enjoying it, you can quietly contact me and was like, Darren was one man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Darren, congratulations. Tell you what, it's been a pleasure talking to you today, man. And great performances in the Super 50, by the way, with real consistency. Um, and I think that was what was really impressive about what you delivered with the extra pressure, although you said it was easy of captaincy and to perform with the bat the way you did is quite impressive. And hopefully we'll be seeing a lot more from you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, Darren, bravo. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Lance and Mariah, quickly, I, I, I think I've said it on the show before, mm -hmm. um, that it's a travesty that Darren's career, um, you know, took the trajectory that it did, because I think West Indies cricket has been robbed of someone who I think could genuinely have been one of the great West Indies batsmen. And I've said this before, that this is the first time in the history of West Indies cricket um, especially in the test format, where we lack a truly genuine world-class batsman. No other period in the history of West Indies cricket, I think, we've been without a, a, a world-class batsman. And had things been different, Darren Bravo would have been that. I mean, he is quite possibly the most attractive batsman to watch um, in this region. And I do hope, I really do hope he gets back into the West Indies setup and we can see from him what I think the entire region knows he is capable yeah, I, of. I, I agree with everything you just said, Ricardo. And uh, the fact is, he's just 34 years old and um, based you, you on... You say just, Lance. I, I love how you say just 34. Be, be, Thanks, because, though, yes. be, because I am saying it in the context of what we have available to us at the moment. Yes. And the fact that he's 34 years old, which you would generally regard as getting old, Given West Indies cricket and the landscape that we are now looking at, a 34-year-old Bravo, in my opinion, can contribute significantly to this team. He has eight test hundreds, um, about four ODI hundreds, and he has not played a lot of cricket, certainly a lot less than some others who have not done as well or not had as, the, as impressive statistics as he has. So I'm hopeful that his international career isn't finished because I'd, I'd like to see him on the front stage again. And I just want to judge on the form that we've seen from him right now. 34 means nothing. There is no stopping him. He has been really consistent for the TNT Red Force. And let's just say a lot of the people playing in the TNT Red Force team are, some of, most of them are members of the West Indies team. So it was top class quality cricket and I think he still has what it takes. Yeah, let's see how it all turns out. We take a break. We'll be back with more on the Sports Max Zone.